by the time it became my turn to do The Shaft in 2000, it's like, how do I, as an actor, find myself into that particular place? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, Mr. Armani stepped up and said, you know, I would like to dress you for this film. I was like, really? Okay. All right, well, what's that going to be? <laughs> From Armani to Gucci to Versace, a new documentary looks at the Italian fashion industry of the 70s and 80s and how it continues to shape our culture today. It's called Milano, the inside story of Italian fashion. And director John Maggio joins us now. Good morning, John. Hey, John. Good morning, Larry and Lauren. Great to be here. Thanks for being with us. So, John, when you think about these iconic names, sometimes you don't really think about the people behind the names. I know Gianni Versace, obviously, a lot of people know. But I was curious about the, the relationships and the interactions between someone like Giorgio Armani, classic elegance, and Gianni Versace, who was more kind of cutting-edge fashion. What was that relationship like? Well, they were competitors, uh, I mean, at the bottom line, you know, but they were also really into the idea of having an Italian fashion system, kind of like the way the French did. But they came from two totally different backgrounds. I mean, uh, Armani was originally going to be a doctor. He's from northern Italy, very sort of, um, you know, his his approach is very almost sort of scientific and in a kind of like almost like an engineer. Um, and he, you know, reconstructed the men's silhouette, which had never been done before with the deconstructed suit. Whereas Versace comes from the south, much more colorful. You know, you think of Versace, you think of the vibrant colors of southern Italy and the emotion and all of that kind of romance that he brings to it. So there, there are two different sort of versions of the Italian culture. Um, but I think to the rest of the world, they represented Italy. And so in some ways they were unified, but often very sort of, you know, in competition for who was getting more press and who was really the symbol of Italian fashion. You can't have Italian fashion without both of them. Was there a breakthrough moment in America where people said, hey, maybe we should try this? Yes, for Armani, certainly it was in the 80s um, when American Gigolo came out, which is a movie I I would sort of, you know, uh, it, it is such, it is like a basically an Armani commercial. And at that moment, <laughs> at that moment Richard Gere, if you look back at it now, you forget, you know, how hot Richard Gere was and how incredible he looked yeah. in Armani's clothes. And, you know, he goes through his closet, he's picking out Armani clothes, putting them on. And that's really what set off Italian fashion in this country. You think about all these Italian fashion houses, for example, also Gucci, uh, with the families behind them. How many are still owned by the actual families versus maybe the French coming in and, and picking up and um, joining a conglomerate? Yeah, uh, you know, just a few of them. Uh, Signor Armani is is maybe, you know, the last biggest one. Prada is mostly owned still by the family. Mm -hmm. And Dolce and Gabbana are, you know, solely family owned. Um, and that's been the issue. And that's one of the things we sort of tackle in the film, which is that, you know, the French have always had a system. Um, and there are they are, you know, in many ways dominant. Um, but, you know, it's kind of made everything a little homogenous. You know, we've lost that yeah. flair that bespoke feeling. But uh, Mr. Armani, for as long as he can, you know, he's getting up there in age. He wants it to be a family owned company. And the same is true with Dolce and Gabbana and Prada to a certain extent. But all the rest of them mostly are been sold off to French conglomerates. So as a director, as you're looking at all this, is there something that jumps out to you about all these different families, whether it's something they have in common or some particular conflict? Well, you know, that one of the reasons I focused on the family so much is because I, I, I'm an Italian, Italian-American, and I had made a series many years ago about Italian, uh, about the Italian-American experience in this country. And it, it's very sort of tribal, you know, and with that comes you know, a kind of siloed worldview, and even when it comes to business. So each one of the families is really, you know, it's a it's a sort of artifact of the Italian way and the way it Italy itself developed. So, you know, they're unique in their in their Italianness, and that's really the only way I can say it. <laughs> it's very sort of sort of private uh, yeah. about how yeah. they run their businesses. Makes sense. For more on Milano, the inside story of Italian fashion, you can check out the website on your screen or follow John on social media. John, thanks so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, guys.